Hey, Parco. Hey, Parco. Hey, listeners. Welcome to our little podcast that we're calling a Gen X celebration of lifelong friendship. I'm Samantha. And I'm Anne. And we're the Parcos. And today we're going to discuss It's a Miracle We're Still Alive. Part one. It really is a miracle that we're dun, still dun, alive. Dun. <laughs> it is. Indeed. God, where to start with this, huh? Well, I mean, you know, I've got one for you. I still have my pair of click clacks. You don't. I do. And what color were they? Or are they? They were like a, or they are like a, like a psychedelic greenish yellow color. Okay. I can see that. Okay. For anybody who doesn't know what a click clack is, give it a little description. So a click clack are two little balls that are connected to two strings and a little ring on top where the, where the two strings are connected to the ring and you bounce it up and down. It makes this click clack noise. Yeah, like, like, right. Like you hold the ring and you sort of like move your hand up and down and the balls like the, hit each other. They hit each other and they make a, a very loud clicky clacky sound. I mean, I didn't yes. realize that the click clacks yeah. um, were as big as the hula hoop. I believe that just because I remember that we all had them. We all would all had them. We were clicky clacking. Can you imagine what a nightmare that was for our parents Mm -hmm. to listen to the click clack all the time? They were also sometimes called like clangers or clackers. Uh, And they were also sometimes called knockers. Knockers. I don't remember that. Um, Well, so I I did. I did a small dive on the. Okay. Okay. I did a small Uh dive. Let's hear it. So. Okay, so in 1971, several children, see, when they were made of glass, and if they were hit too hard, they would shatter. Yeah, I don't think we knew them when they were made of glass, did we? Mine are made of glass because everything (gasps) I have are hand-me-downs. And super dangerous. And super dangerous. So, (laughs) so, so... The click clacks would explode, and they'd explode into the eyes of the children and blind them. Yeah. And there was no, like, there was no consumer toy thing at the time, if you Mm -hmm. can believe this, okay? Now, now, okay, so they were completely recalled, all right? And it was illegal to own these glass click clacks. I probably should have said that I still have the glass click clacks. So they were recalled. And they were taken off the market. And then they came up with clackers that were made of wood or of metal or of other plastics. And they found that the plastics also exploded and the shrapnel in the eye was not a good thing. Okay? <laughs> Generally not a good thing. Yeah. But here's, here's something that I found so fascinating in my little brief dive. Click clacks were huge all over the world. And so when all of our things were getting recalled, my God, everybody else in the world were going crazy for click clacks. And, you know, the popularity kind of died down. And, and in 2017, in Egypt, the click clacks came back. Only they were called sissy balls. This cannot be good. I'm assuming S-I-S-I is pronounced sissy or, or is it sissy? I don't, I don't, I don't know. But okay, sounds but, like a good guess. Right. Yeah. So they named it Sissy Balls after the president of Egypt. <laughs> what was his name? Sissy? Yes, his last name was Sissy. Sissy Balls. Oh, and okay. people were getting arrested for playing with the click clacks. And that is the end of my story. So not Guys. only not only can it blind you, oh it can cause yes. political unrest. <laughs> How about lawn darts? Holy crow. Remember lawn darts? Yes, I do remember lawn darts. It's it's funny that you you bring that up because um, I was at work and a friend of mine, a co-worker, said, yeah, my cousin and I used to throw them at each other. Thank God we weren't good shots. I mean, because boys are silly. I was going to say something else, but I'm just going to say boys are silly. <laughs> yeah. And no, in 1987, a seven-year-old girl was killed by a lawn dart. 
And oh that led to them being banned in the U.S. in 1988 and uh, in Canada in 1989. Wait, yeah. 1988? Really? Yeah. I thought it would uh-huh. have been. I thought it'd been much sooner with the click clock. Well, well, no, because they didn't necessarily just apply the same rules for every toy. You well, know, that's true. It, it sort of had to be proven that it was dangerous first, and right. then they would apply some kind of safety label. Wow. But yeah, the little girl getting killed in 1987 is what led to the ban. Oh. Um, so, so they had already had it labeled as for adults only, right. but th- that obviously wasn't working, and right. so they just said, "Forget it. We just have to pull this entirely." And in an eight-year period b- before the banning. About 6,000 Americans were sent to the ER with injuries from lawn darts. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, this was a serious problem. I mean, you can't, you can't trust it in the hands of adults either. Well, well, know? here's the thing. Okay, I, I have to ask. How? Yeah. I mean, this sounds terrible, but how many alcohol-related jart incidences? Mm. Are, right. You know? I mean, because, right. you know, you're outside, you're playing, it's usually a picnic, you're having beer or whatever, and you're yep. throwing darts. Fourth of July or something Fourth like that. Fourth of July. Outside, cookout. See? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Someone breaks out the lawn darts, and then the tears start falling. You remember the slip and slide, Wait, right? wait, wait. Don't tell me that's been yeah. banned. Well, um, I'm not aware of it being having been banned, Right. Right. But uh, between 1973 and 1991, a 13 year old and about seven adults suffered neck injuries leading to paralysis when using slip and slide. Oh my God. Well, and I have to tell, I have my own little story with this, yes. which is it wasn't actually a slip and slide, but it was inspired by a slip and slide mm-hmm. because I was this like poor little kid and I didn't have a slip and slide. But me, me and my friends, in my, yeah, in my uh, apartment building, we took a bunch of long pieces of cardboard and set them out end to end to make a long slide. And we would get pitchers of water that we would like go into the, the laundry room of the building, fill it up with water, pour it on, and then someone would slide down. And it was totally because, you know, we wanted to have a slip and slide. And I was going in, it was my turn to go get the pitcher of water. I was soaking wet, of course, because I'd gone down the slide a few times got the pitcher of water and slipped on the floor (gasps) and absolutely my feet came out from underneath me and my head (gasps) bounced against the concrete floor. Oh. Yeah. 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 And I swore from that day forward for a few years, I could feel my brain jiggle inside my head. Oh my God. You probably were seriously concussed. I I probably was. Yeah, you probably probably were. But there was an issue with it, with health health insurance. We'll, we'll go into some other time. Right. <laughs> that just adds to the perils of being a child in the 1970s. Okay, I was really into skateboarding and really into roller skating. And I think about all the things that I would do on that skateboard, like going to the top of a huge public parking structure and slaloming between the little concrete stoppers, car stoppers, all the way down, all the way down. <laughs> I don't even know without a helmet, without a of cell course. phone. If I got in, if I got hurt. Oh yeah. Oh, we were so far from cell phones, please. <laughs> As, if. As if. As if. Killer Halloween candy. Yeah. And was it real? I think there actually were a couple of incidents that weren't at all the way it was portrayed to us, but right. did actually raise fears. And right. that this other part of it is that a lot of the deaths that were attributed to poison candy were actually due to natural causes or a family accident and even at least one known murder. What? Yeah, I'll give you a couple examples. So in 1970, a five-year-old accidentally ate his uncle's heroin. Oh, shoot. OD'd. Oh, my God. But it was near Halloween, and the family uh, didn't want to reveal that he had eaten his uncle's heroin. Oh, so they my claimed, God. They claimed that it was the Halloween candy. Oh, and my course, God. Right. So, I mean, of course, they did like an autopsy or whatever, and they realized, uh, yeah, it wasn't candy. 
just, you know, oops. Wow. So that kind of a thing. Um, and another example is in 1974, an eight-year-old boy uh, was intentionally poisoned via pixie sticks <gasps> by his own father oh. for the insurance money. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So God, his father people are so his, evil. They're so people are evil. evil. Yeah. So his father put the poison is a boy's own pixie sticks. And just for good measure, he put it in a couple of other pixie sticks that were given out to <gasps> children, but happily those children never ate them. So, <sighs> so even whether or not there ever really was any killer Halloween candy oh, no. when we were children, yeah. we lived in fear of it. Right. Well, I mean, remember, remember yeah. when the Tylenol capsules had the cyanide that. in it? And like, absolutely remember that. And and yeah. five, I think it was like five people died, and right. you know, Tylenol took the capsules off the market. I don't remember what year that happened, though. I think it was in the eighties. But that led to the safety caps and the plastic mm -hmm. over the top of right. medicine bottles. Yep. And yep. I mean, it's really hard to imagine after you get used to these safety measures to remember that there was a time when they didn't exist. Right. When you, when you could just twist off the top of any medicine bottle, pull mm -hmm. out the cotton that is there <laughs> and right. just there's the medicine, you right. know, and there's nothing, there was no safety seal right. foil on top and there may or may not have been a safe a children children's safety cap. I can't remember when children's safety caps came along. I, I but I we can't. definitely lived in a world that didn't have them though. Right. When we were really little. We were latchkey kids. We were latchkey kids. So not we only walked home from school and stay home by ourselves. By ourselves. Nobody. By ourselves or just with like other, with our friends. Right. You know, right. <laughs> that was right. pretty much it. I mean, there's right. um, this uh, quote on a, a Wikipedia page about Gen X mm -hmm. uh, describing Gen X as the generation that went through its all important informative years as one of the least parented, yeah. least nurtured generations in U.S. history. <laughs> So, yes. I think we can attest that this was our experience. <laughs> you know? Like, my mom was a nurse, okay? And mm -hmm. she was a very good nurse. And she ended up becoming an administrator. But she was a very good nurse. And she knew what she was doing. However, because she was a single mom, and she was working really hard, I wasn't, like, number one on her plate. And when I would get injured at home because I was alone and I decided to, you know, trip on, I mean, I was always breaking something, right? I was just always breaking I something. Do, I do remember this. <clears throat> and so there was this one time that we, uh, we were dog sitting my godmother's wiener dog. And I was in the backyard with the wiener dog and some other neighborhood kid. And um, we were playing ball. And I somehow tripped on the wiener dog's bone. And oh. I sprained my right ankle and broke my left ankle. Wow. And I, so I you, called my you were mom. completely down. I yeah. called my mom at work and I said, I think I really hurt myself. She's like, you just got out of a cast. And I said, <laughs> I think I need to have an x-ray, mom. No. So she waited a week. She waited a week before she took me in to wow. get all x-rayed and everything while my feet yeah. were blue. Wow. <laughs> These are the kind of parents that tough up, toughen up, kid. <laughs> walk it off. <laughs> it was very walk it off. That's oh, true. it was so walk it off. Yeah. And during the summer, when... We'd be off school or we had friends who would be sent off to camp and right. things like that. Right. But you and I were not so fortunate. No. And as a matter of fact, camp. my mom would send me to like this, like, like Tuesdays and Thursdays, she'd send me to the Y mm -hmm. um, and she got on mm -hmm. some kind of scholarship. And then um, summer school, my mother would always sign me up for summer school at the elementary school that you and I met at. Childcare. Exactly. <laughs> That's where I learned how to square dance. 
I, you know, right. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, but but summer summer school was always over by noon. So right, and so my there was mom still a lot of time. My mom yeah. was not coming home till five thirty, six, sometimes six thirty. But I I was so afraid of the Planet of the Apes. <sighs> That I wouldn't go walk down my hallway. Oh, the hallway no. was dark, and that all the all the doors. I were remember open. that dark hallway. Yeah. Yes, and it was really it's scary. It was yeah. really really scary. And then the glass shower door. Like finally, I would have to like I'd run really fast in hopes that the Planet of the Apes were going to come and take me away and put me in a cage. <laughs> Right. And then I would go, I, I'd quickly go to the bathroom, and then I'd freak myself out with that stupid glass door where I'm like, somebody's behind that glass shower door. Right. right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then when I was 10, when I was 10, it was no, I was no longer afraid of the Planet of the Apes. I was afraid of Darth Vader and the Stormtroopers, and they were all going to take <laughs> me away. And I, I would believe that Darth Vader was in that stupid shower just Aww. waiting to take me and but if he'd been in there, you would have heard him. Might, maybe not. <laughs> Is scuba gear breathing? <laughs> scuba gear breathing. That's that. Oh, you know what? It's amazing how logical you can be when you're 54. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the whole. I mean, the whole latchkey kid when we're when we're little was was one thing. Uh, the whole latchkey kid as we came of age was a whole different kit and caboodle. Well, when you say came of age, well, I mean, what do like, you mean? well, I mean, like teenager, those ages when the hormones are really kicking in. Well, I would say much earlier than that. I mean, I'm thinking of when you and I were still in elementary school, when we were in sixth grade, where we met. Oh, I um, love you, Barco. <laughs> I love you, too. Uh, we would get up to mischief at oh. your house after school. And oh, yeah. We were only like 11 years old. We weren't teenagers yet. No, no. Yes, I know. I know. We, we definitely know. would get up to mischief and we would, you know... I mean, it's amazing how much we were able to roam free on the streets yes. of the San yes. Fernando Valley with nary an adult, yes. you know, like I've always said, right. I've always said my thing was going to record stores. And I do believe that the employees at Moby Disc are the ones that formed, you know, gave me the, 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 the male figures in my life. They were like my babysitters, right. you know, right, right. They would, they would, yeah. you know, settle down, young girl. Here, <laughs> listen to this record. <laughs> oh. It'll set you straight. It'll set you straight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember us certainly like going out on our, our little expeditions after school as well to places like record stores and mm -hmm. the, the mall. mall, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I also remember us making prank calls from your house. <gasps> too. Back in the old days Dead. where you had the phone book and you like look somebody up. And even in a place like Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles, you could find a lot of people's phone numbers in the phone book. Oh, because yeah. you actually had to pay to not be listed exactly. in the phone book in those days. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, yeah, I remember us making several saucy well, calls. Oh, okay, but I will say that you, you were the because you had why. you had the perfect phone sex voice, which is weird because we're talking about eleven year old, twelve I know. year old, kind of deeper voices run in my family. So I had a fairly deep voice, even though to look at me, I looked younger than I was, but right. I sounded a lot older. Right. So, and plus, yeah. you had such an amazing vocabulary at that age. I mean, you were very, very you still are, but I mean, you were extraordinarily smart. Stop. So anyway, you, you would go you. and you make these. But you, <laughs> can, you, can you do one of those phone calls? Here, here, hold on a second. Bring, bring, bring. Hello? I, 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 this is an obscene phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Did that require a great vocabulary? <laughs> Okay, I don't that know. was one of our standard yes. silly ones right. that we did in those days. Um, but yeah, there there was, um, let's say, a little bit older when we were 14-ish, 13, mm -hmm. 14. We had a 
unusual, an unusual algebra teacher. Oh my God. And <laughs> he came from Hungary originally, is my understanding. Yes. Um, and uh, oh. he had a heavy accent. That is not what made him strange. It was his general demeanor and his and it, methods of teaching. And his, well, yeah. d- d- don't you remember the little mimeographs that he would, he would put, be happy, healthy, and wise? I still have I some of those. I don't remember that. Oh, God, wow. he would always, like, and they were like teddy bears. And it was like, what the hell is and this? And, and this, that is the yeah, opposite of his personality. Completely. Total opposite of his personality. Completely. He was unapproachable. He did not want you to ever talk to him. He didn't want to teach his students in any, like, one-on-one way. Mm-mm. What he would do is he would set up the overhead projector. Mm-hmm. Children, there used to be something called an overhead projector. Right. Well, wait, they would wait, have, wait. Yeah, yeah. There's no longer mimeographs. There are huge, huge amounts of people younger than us who have never smelled a mimeograph. That's true. So it's like a a, a primitive copy machine. Right. Basically. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, there was, I guess, heat involved or something that would create I don't that know. smell. I, I you know, paper, it, probably something like that. I don't know because I never operate. I know some students would operate the mimeograph machine in the school oh, office. Only the only the I, cool kids got to operate the mimeograph. Really? Machine. Was it cool kids? Was it? Really I cool think kids? so. I think <laughs> it's. I think it was like the 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 kids where the parents gave a lot of money to the school, so let the kid use the mimeograph machine. So, but this algebra teacher, we did actually target him for some of our prank call abuse. Yes. And I seem to remember, if you want to bring, bring now, you can bring, bring. Bring, bring. Bring, bring. Hello. Alexander, is it you? Yes. Alexander, is this me? You did not meet me for our secret rendezvous. Where were you? Oh, Alexander, you left me alone. <laughs> what do you have to say? <laughs> yeah. oh. That was kind of thing that we did to oh, that particular teacher. Oh, my God. And I'm then so there was absurd. the day he played along with it and was like, oh, what a rendezvous. And that's when I screamed and hung up the phone because I was so freaked out that he was actually interested in this weird... French character that I had created. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> do you remember when he when he jumped out the window to chase a student? Oh, that's right. He saw. T- yeah, yeah. I do remember that. Yes, <laughs> he spotted one of our classmates who was skipping class and actually jumped out the window to catch him. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't normal, but yeah. Uh, oh God. Oh. But he was, he was, we didn't even explain like how bad he was. Like he would scream at us till his veins were popping. Oh my God. Because he, somebody a- asked, dared to ask a question. Yeah, no, he Because like horrible. I said, like I started to say, he, he would use his overhead projector and he would write all of his like lecture notes on the overhead projector. Yeah. And then you yep. were supposed to just copy down everything he wrote. And that's how you were supposed to learn algebra. It was the first class I ever failed. Yeah, but you weren't alone. There were so many people failing in that class. The only people who weren't failing it were people who had tutors outside of the class who were teaching them. And the rest of us were just screwed. So, right. um, yeah, we had to write some kind of letter to the administration. And then they basically, it was like we never took the class rather than actually get the F. So what, that's, I'm glad you remembered that. I mean, yeah. I just remember being so horrified by that oh, yeah. grade. Um, so mm-hmm. the next year, in order to go, so we separated and went to different high schools. And in order for me to uh, be accepted into the school, I had to retake algebra that summer. And it was an independent study algebra. Mm. I got an A. Right. I aced algebra which is right. really funny because if you, if I try to do it now I don't even remember how to do half the math um, right. but right. but what's so interesting is when I was 18 I worked at Tower Records that very algebra teacher came up to my cash register I was so angry at him and I looked at him and I said you know I had to retake algebra but guess what 
I got an A, but not because of you. Did he remember you? No. No. He could give a crap about any student. Yeah, I think he got kicked out of our school. So I don't. I wonder where he was even teaching at that point. I don't know. Maybe he went yeah. on a rendezvous. <laughs> Perhaps he did. Hey, Perhaps Alexander. You're so good. You were like we, the I best prank it. caller. We were, we were feral. That's all I want to say. <laughs> yeah, we, we were, were feral. absolutely feral. And we bought the Playgirl because it had Mark Smith yes! in it. <laughs> <laughs> and we all put on English accents thinking that that would make us older. Or... This will be a great cover, girls. <laughs> You'll never know. We live in the neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we didn't have a fake ID or anything. How did we? I think we were just flirting with the guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably what. Uh, you know. <laughs> and yeah. you were tall, so people always thought you were older than you were. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I was the I was the youngest. I want everybody to know. But of course, <laughs> I'm the okay, one wait, who gets in trouble. Say, I'm the one me. who gets. I take. Excuse the, me. I take the Hello. Of it. What? Can I just I- interject something here? You are one month and nine days younger than me. I'm still younger. <laughs> <laughs> one month and nine days. That's it. I don't care. I'm still younger. <laughs> oh, These my are God. the things that matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle we're still alive continues in our next episode of Hey Parko. We'd love to hear your stories of being a Gen X kid. You can contact us on our website, heyparko.com, where you'll find links to our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages, along with images and info related to this and other Hey Parko episodes. Thanks for listening. See you next time.